Copenhagen. Isn't it just another expensive Scandinavian city? Yes, it is another expensive Scandinavian city. But since this is the first city I was traveling alone on this trip, things have shaken up a slight bit, and I would definitely say hostel life enriched it. On the first morning, I was blessed to have met Harrison at the hostel breakfast, who was a military nerd. We visited the war museum, which exhibited a number of tankers, model ships, and other items of interest related to Danish war history. Learning about the nation's historical relations with other Scandinavian countries is eye-opening for me, as I've never learned of its conflicts with Sweden in the past. And from a solely modern perspective, it is hard to perceive or imagine that past. There was also a section on the Danish military involvement in the Middle East, which was very inspiring, as it showcased various perspectives from those affected at the war grounds to the general Danish public. The fact that the perspectives vary drastically between the five main parties and between 2011 and 2021 shows the controversial nature of this topic. On another morning, I went to the Christiana Freetown with a North African guy I met at the hostel, Musa. Unfortunately, I've taken very few photos there as photography is not allowed. Anyways, based on what I've heard of the Freetown prior to going there, I expected something similar to the old Kowloon Walled City in Hong Kong. However, when I arrived, I found it somewhat more like an alternate Disneyland with funny backdoor tradings going on. That is to say, the town is comically picturesque and colorful, but seemingly catered towards tourists. I couldn't detect any funny smells from drugs, though Musa said he did. However, he thought what the merchants sold must have been watered-down versions meant to lure tourists who simply wanted the thrill of buying something illegal. That might be very true. After all, the very existence of this town is illegal, so it is in the town's interest to maintain a peaceful atmosphere to prevent government involvement. Conversely, it is in the government's interest to use it as a honeypot to lure tourists to Copenhagen. In my own time, museums, relate, uh, museums remained an important part of my itinerary. Firstly, I went to the Museum of Copenhagen which showcased the city's history. My favorite part was actually a temporary exhibit about an advertisement designer Ip and Tony who created advertisements for the tourism board. I'm not sure how effective the advertisements were, but it has a very colorful look that is simple yet highly distinctive. Secondly, I went to Kunsthal Charlottenburg, which is a large art museum. I focused on the exhibit Welcome to the Shit Show by Jeremy Delwa, which uses British dark humor to critique the downsloping economic conditions and politicians' incompetency. However, there was also a section on the influence of Depeche Mode, which drew my attention. This is because it never occurred to me that modern British culture has had this degree of relevance in recent decades. Finally, I went to the Copenhagen Contemporary. Like any other contemporary museum, there is a series of exhibits that discuss or incorporate abstract themes such as time and space, as well as discussions on the permanence of art. I found the artwork critical on fast fashion very intriguing, though I wouldn't say this visit made a highlight of my trip. In addition to museums, skating of course occupied a significant portion of my solo time. I do feel this was partly a result of the surprisingly good weather though. On my first afternoon, I took a stroll in the center, passing by the most Instagram spot, Nyaven, and other picturesque locations along the river and lakes. The sunset made photography more challenging, but the ones I show here are absolutely spectacular. On the afternoon after the Copenhagen contemporary visit, I took a stroll along the coastside neighborhood of Amager East. I initially went into an industrial area by accident, but a subsequent skate along the Strand Park was very comfortable and offered nice views of the sea and a bridge connecting Copenhagen to Malmo, Sweden. The promenade was very well equipped with many facilities like swimming piers, skate parks, golf courses, and even a parkour playground where I stopped for photo photographs for quite a bit. I continued itself along the strand until I smelled the feel of airplanes from the airport, at which point I decided for my health it would be better for me to make a return. Before ending the day, I skated all the way back to the city centre to take a quick look 
at the Little Mermaid, which is a must-see icon of the city. Though I previously said Oslo's psychopaths were quite smooth, I think the network here is definitely more comprehensive. This has precisely allowed me to skate 20 kilometers that afternoon, which I think might actually be my longest skate in any trip. So about the thing that Scandinavia is expensive. On this trip, I didn't stay at a hostel where I could cook. I have, however, thus far managed to visit two museums on their free entry day and extensively explore the city and even its suburbs with only my feet. Admittedly, I did spend quite a bit on dining sometimes, but that was when I was with friends and as a reward for my long skates. Otherwise, I typically had very light lunches. So yes, Copenhagen is expensive, but I would say you could still explore it economically with reasonable adjustments to food and transport sometimes. Anyhow, to end the video, I would like to show you some footage of myself skating along Nyaven, the most picturesque part of the city. So until next time, goodbye.